Assassin's Creed Valhalla's Forgotten Saga DLC adds a new game mode in the form of a roguelike adventure into Niflheim. With new enemies and mechanics to contend with, let IGN help you get the most from your runs with these tips and tricks. Your skills from the base game do not carry over to this DLC. In fact, Odin has his own skill tree that you should focus on upgrading early on. This can be accessed at your Raven's Perch in camp. While you can complete the skill tree in whatever manner you prefer, we highly recommend focusing on unlocking a few specific skills and base stats first. Brush with Death is a skill that slows time when you dodge enemy attacks. This can be crucial as it allows you to land more hits, regain stamina, or back away during the slowdown. Fight Ready ensures that you start every fight with a full adrenaline bar, meaning you can get the jump on enemies by unleashing a strong special attack at the start of every fight. Coupled with the Adrenaline Upgrade, which adds an extra Adrenaline Bar, you will be a scary foe for any enemies that cross your path. At the start of every run in Niflheim, you will be given a random set of gear. A good start guarantees that your starting gear will always be superior quality. This of course will give you an early edge over the enemies of the first area. And finally, Fateful Fortune is a base stat increase of 5% to your chances of finding legendary loot. There are 12 of these nodes in the skill tree which stack to a 60% increase. This ups your chances of having gear that melt away your enemy's health bars in no time at all. There is a headless viking warrior in Kaldstadt that you can assist for a mighty reward. The viking warrior is in a cave along the western objectives just below a zipline. Inside you will find an invoker statue which will begin a fight between yourself and the warrior. Defeat her in three different runs to help the warrior regain her head and sense of self. As a reward, you will receive the strongest favor in the game, Summoned Courage. Once per run, instead of dying, you will be resurrected with half of your health. This can come in clutch, especially as you journey deeper into Niflheim and face stronger challengers. Speaking of enemies, you should try to use one of the new mechanics to your advantage. All enemies now have an elemental weakness to either fire, poison, electricity, or ice. While drops are random, you can still focus on collecting gear, abilities, and runes that build up your elemental damage. If there is a particular enemy, especially a boss, you are struggling against, it would be a good idea to create a build around their weakness. Enemy weaknesses are denoted by the symbol next to their health bar. Unlike Eivor, Odin doesn't carry a pouch of berries he can heal with, so you need to be more strategic in your approach. Using stealth and your bow to whittle down enemy numbers before engaging them head-on is always the right call. Take your time and observe each area using Odin's sight to mark enemies and pick them off. There are two ways to heal, Elk Shrines and Elk Antlers. Elk Shrines are statues spread throughout Niflheim. Each statue can only be used once per run. This means you will need to think strategically about when to use them. Can you defeat this next group of enemies, or should you try to sneak past for the Elk Shrine? Are you willing to miss out on a loot drop to heal up? These are scenarios you will need to consider, and deciding correctly can be the difference between life and death. Elk Antlers, on the other hand, can be purchased from wandering merchants and heal up to 150 health points. They cost coins and are used immediately, so you can't stack them or hold on to them to use later on. Additionally, each Wandering Merchant only carries one per run, so again, you need to utilize these wisely and decide if they are worth spending your hard-earned coins on. Our final tip regards your weapon choice. There is a huge selection of weapons you can be rewarded with in a given run, and while you can't pick exactly what you want, there are certain weapon types that we recommend over others. Daggers and flails can be fast to use or combo with, but you need to be right in the enemy's face to hit them. This leaves you open to get hit back, as well as easily getting surrounded by the group of enemies you are fighting, so we do not recommend this weapon type. At Gears and Dane Axes are a reasonably good choice, as they maintain some distance from enemies and do good damage. Their main issue is that swings and combos can be slow and leave you open for return damage. While better than the flails and daggers, these weapons still aren't the best available. The best weapon options are spears and long greatswords. These weapons still maintain range, but are much quicker and have deadlier combos. In all encounters, we recommend these weapon types over any others, so if you are awarded one from a loot drop, you better take it. Using these tips and tricks should help you along your travel through Hell's Domain. For all things Assassin's Creed Valhalla, be sure to check out our wiki and keep it locked right here on IGN.